Now we've talked to lots of stars of adult cinema. Mary, I do believe you are the first gubernatorial uh, <laughs> candidate of the day. That I've, You know, you're always going to have that distinction no matter what, right? Definitely. You know, I'm glad I ran for governor because, you know, I think it showed people that there's like a little bit of brains in the adult industry too, you know. We're not just a bunch of like dumb blonde girls that like to have sex. We're smart. <laughs> I, uh, now, now, really, what everybody's probably going to be seeing a lot more of you on in the, the coming weeks, and I saw the first episode last night, is Dr. Drew's Celebrity uh, Rehab Show. Yeah. <laughs> and I think already you're looking to be one of the uh, real standouts of, of that. <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, what are you thinking about that? You know, um, I, I really liked doing the show. It was it was amazing. And I had a lot of fun. Like, I really, I really used it to help me because I really was addicted to Xanax, which I did not say in the first episode, but... That comes out further down the line. It wasn't just alcohol, it was Xanax, a lot of Xanax I was taking. And he helped me. I haven't touched his Xanax since I did the show. And I don't drink hard liquor anymore. But, um, you know, it was great. Yeah, the show's on BH1 every Thursday at 10 p.m. When, when, you have the, uh, when you're addicted to Xanax, do you have that feeling like you know you're addicted but you just don't care? And that's that point of Xanax to begin you know, with, you know? Well, I used to take them to go to bed every night. And I started taking them two and a half years ago. Um, and I started taking a quarter of bedtime. That was up to a half then a whole bar, and then I was at two and a half bars. And it was the only way I could sleep at night, and I was dependent upon them. And so, like, I knew I had a problem with them, but I didn't know how to stop. And Xanax is something that if you quit it cold turkey, you can have seizures. It's actually one of the worst withdrawals. And, um, but Drew put me on anti-seizure medication, and new sleeping pills, and mood stabilizers. Yeah. And I haven't touched them, so. But yeah, you know, I think a lot of people on the show all knew they had problems, but it's just hard to get help, you know? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's uh, that's, that show is of particular interest to me because uh, his radio show, Love Line, airs right after mine does oh, really? back in Dallas. Yeah, and uh, one of the things I think is interesting about the show so far, and I don't know how much you had ever heard Love Line, but it seems like there's uh, another kind of more aggressive side of him that isn't really coming out on the radio when he's doing that one-on-one -on -one yeah. therapy. He's very kind of matter-of-fact with you, right? Yeah, he really is, and um, he's definitely more aggressive. And we, we, would, we would meet with him for two hours every day from 10 to 12 in a group setting, and then we each have one-on-one -on -one meetings every single day. And he has this like way to be able to feel like, like if I wasn't always telling the truth about something, he could tell. He can, and he has a way to get things out of you. Like for me, I had a lot of psychological issues that he helped me with, mm -hmm. and um, you know, with trauma and everything. And he's just, he's, you know, he's amazing. He's one of the leading addiction doctors in the country, and he's, he's definitely a little different than he is on Love One. You know, he's way more serious. I uh, you're back, man. You are on the top of uh, the contenders list after dealing with some injury issues. And, you know, the quick study on you, uh, for those who need a refresher course, of course, the two huge upsets over uh, Shane Mosley just thrust you right there into the spotlight. And uh, and really, now that you have you've dealt with that shoulder injury that a lot of people were uh, concerned about, it looks like it's not giving you any problem whatsoever. Your last fight, very exciting. And uh, what, what's uh, what's going to be coming up here for you soon? Well, I should be back in the ring um, around March or April. But uh, definitely a fight that I want is, is uh, Floyd Mayweather's fight. We yeah. definitely want that fight. So, you know, whenever he's willing and able to make that fight, I'm here, We're waiting, ready for you, waiting for you. So we definitely can make that fight at any time. I think that would be a fantastic fight to see. I'm sure you saw the fight he had with Ricky Hatton. And, you know, even though he got a knockout win over Ricky Hatton, I thought that aggressive style of fighting made Floyd Mayweather have the best or maybe fight the most aggressively he's ever had to fight. And I think your style would probably match up well against him in that same regard. Absolutely. Uh, everybody is familiar with how I broke down Shane Mosley. And Florida Shane has a very, very simple style. I know how to fight those fast guys. You know, that little stuff that he does, doesn't affect me one way or the other. So I would love, to, love that fight, you know. And so, you know, all the fans out there, you want to fight, make that fight happen, only thing you got to do is, 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 is uh, call HBO, email HBO, let's make that fight happen. And demand it. Hey, uh, I want to tell you before I let you go, Vernon, uh, just a little insider tip. I, I don't know if you're single or married or what, but I'm going to tell you who's a huge boxing fan on the floor. Adam and Eve contract girl Carmen LaFont. I interviewed her yesterday. We ended up talking box, and she's picking uh, Tito Trinidad over Roy Jones Jr. So if you see her, you got to strike up that conversation. Oh, with her heart, you know what I mean? That's what it is, yeah. I go there and holler at him in the Yeah, yeah. Off camera, though. We're going to meet the girls' go wall party tonight at Rain at uh, the Palms. I understand you're, you're there. You performing? Yeah, you know, I wasn't scheduled to perform, but you know, it's, it's just cracking and popping and bubbling out there. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing for me to just to jump on stage. Turn everybody into a cyclone, man. It's not going hard. And, you know, I, and it's going to be an exciting party. I can't wait to get there. And I might do two or three songs. All right. All right. Now, you still
still, are you, I know you're from Houston, are you still live in Houston? Yeah, I love H-Town, man, H-Town, I'm originally from the Bay Area, California, I love from California, but when I moved to Houston, the cost of living was like half of what, but I make the same amount of money in either place I stay, so logically, I mean, I'm just going to buy a couple of houses in Houston, you know what I mean, instead of one in Cali, you know what I mean? So that's now, what I did. Now, Baby Bash, how'd you get, how'd you get hooked up with uh, Girls Got Wild? Actually, my record label wanted to set up my song. I got a song called Cyclone, which was a big strip, stripping club, big pole song, you know? So my record label thought it was smart to get with Girls Got Wild and, and do a little tour, which before Cyclone came out, actually, the, the song wouldn't even out. When I went on tour, is when I debuted it. And so basically, Girls Got Wild helped explode the song, which became a platinum single. And all, it all started with GG Dub. You know, I haven't had a chance to catch you out here because I know that, like a lot of performers, you know, Vegas, man, it's so awesome because if you get a hit show, you can pretty much just set up shop and never have to worry. You get a lot of props to move otherwise. Right? Yeah, no, it's great. The one thing about it is great. It's about the exact thing that. Yeah. You do the show and you go home at night or someone's home at night. And you don't have to get on a bus and a plane and travel and an airplane. So it's great. That part of it's great. You get to write more. Uh, you're in one place. And it's great. A lot of people I should look up. better. <laughs> I should be rested. This is how I look.